You're listening to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast brought to you by Nottinghamshire Live. Hello, welcome to Garibaldi Red as Nottingham Forest beat Leicester City 2-0 to go 13th in the Premier League. But the win came at a price with two more players on the injury list. So we're going to discuss that, the Danilo signing, and look ahead to the Bournemouth game in the company of, first of all, Reds fan Mikey Clark. Mikey, how are you? I'm great, Matt. How are you? You good? I'm good. A few people asking me on Twitter why the podcast was a bit later today. Am I allowed to rat you out? Go for it. Go for it. It was because you were on a speed awareness course, so that's why we were a bit late. Yeah. Educational as ever. Educational, (laughs) yeah. You know, we've got to uh, do the time if we uh, do the crime, and I've done a couple as well, so that's fine. Uh, Second guest today is former Reds midfielder Lewis McGugan. Lewis, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Good, good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll start with you, Mikey. As we say, really good win over Leicester City, climbing the table again. Just some general thoughts on the day and how you felt walking away from the stadium to kick us off. Yeah, really interesting. I, I really enjoyed it. Obviously, before the game started, my, my thoughts were taken back to the cup game and how well we played against them there. And uh, my my only hope was that we turned up and had a similar sort of energetic front foot performance, which I think as the game went on, we saw. So this, this forest team continues to impress me. I'll I'll be honest with you. As as sticky as it was at the start of the season with a load of new players changing our formation, you know, the first time we've been in this league for almost two dozen years, it was always going to be a bit tough, but I think in recent weeks, we've now started to see the identity grow. And Saturday was just a culmination of all that. So the game I really enjoyed. The atmosphere I thought was really good, really sharp. I thought our fans were fantastic as always. I'll I'll go on to their fans in a minute. Um, I think my general overall feel was previous games this year, when we've had sticky 10 or 20 minutes, we've tended to get a bit deeper let in a few goals and lose the game. Now we're not seeing that. So there were periods of that first half and at the start of the second half where arguably they had the better chances, they were the better team. But this team stuck in there and we ground it out. And as the as the game went on, I always fancied us to, to pick up a goal or two, which we did. So I just really enjoyed the game. I, I enjoyed our approach to it. I love the shape of the team now. I just love the fact, as I said, we stay in games. You know, we, we don't let in those two, three goals every 10 minutes as we were doing a few weeks back. Uh, and like I said, as the game went on, the further it, it was nil-nil, it was always going to get a bit more expansive with players getting a bit tired. And without speed on the transition, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit, I always fancied us to nick it. So when we went in at half-time, uh, just quickly... It was a bit of a mixed view of the, of the fans, I think it's fair to say. A lot of them were, were, were saying to me, we stayed in the game, that's fine. We're always pretty much better second half anyway. I was completely chilled about it, if I'm honest, because I always thought, as I said, as the game went on, we're going to create chances, especially attacking that Trent end, and, and so it proved to be. So really good day, Matt. Echoes of that cup game as well. You know, put, putting them to bed with that second goal with a few minutes to go. And um, now I really, really enjoyed it. And the scenes at the end, the celebrations with all the team, the Cooper fist pumps are back. Just a really, really positive day. And our home record is looking pretty sharp now. Pretty good. So, yeah, absolutely delighted. We'll get on to the specifics of the game as ever shortly. But like Mikey said, Lewis, the, the general trend, the upward curve. Did you see that come in? I think it's been a while since you've been on. Did you think Forest would be where they are now? Uh, probably not. With with the results, how they the last time last time I was on with how the results were going and, and kind of the morale. Uh, around the the whole place, really, it 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 didn't didn't look positive. But I think if you look over the uh, the last kind of three or four weeks, especially especially you look at the Leicester game, you look at Barnes's chances. Probably the big thing in football sometimes you you need a bit of luck, and probably six weeks ago they go in and it's a completely different game, and now Forrester getting away with that. And sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need that bit of luck. And now you go and win the game 2-0. No one's thinking about kind of Barnes's chances and they've gone now. You've got the three points. But probably six weeks ago, they was they was going in and it was a completely different game. And you're probably looking at 
two 0 down at half time. Well, you know, half time, but especially the game, and you and you lose the game. So, I think that there's a lot of lot of things that have all come into it uh, together to get this little run. But I think the biggest thing they've just had a little bit of luck at the right times. And if you're a player on the pitch when Barnes is missing those chances, as I'm sure it's happened to you in your career, do you think, all right, this might be our day? And you know it wasn't six weeks ago, as you're saying. Yeah, you sense it. And it could be the total opposite. You you, you, you play a game sometimes and the ball comes in, it hits one of your defenders on the back of the, and it goes in and stuff. And you just think to yourself, everything's just going against us. We're getting punished for every little bit of mistake. And especially if you look at the first chance, Ore didn't cover around and, and Barnes has got in is a mistake, and you, you sometimes get punished for that. And at the start of the season, Nottingham Forest were getting punished for them things, and they have a little bit of luck. And you think, right, you're lucky there. We got away with one, and you just become a bit tighter. And you know, what I mean, you score the goals at the right time, and and you get the three points, and no one's thinking about them them uh, missed opportunities for Leicester. How much does momentum change things as well, Lewis, in terms of, you know, you turn up to training on a Monday morning, I guess everyone's got that zip in their step and the, the sessions are better and everything, the, the ball rolls and momentum, you take that momentum again into matches, I guess, do you? Yeah, it's massive. They're, the players now in the squad and the staff, the whole training ground will have a, a massive lift. People would, they want to come in now and they want to be around the place. And that's just happens throughout the season. You go through them, them them kind of spots where sometimes it's a bit low and that's when you need your senior players, the vocal players in the change room and the manager and the staff just to keep going, just to keep going and keep keep ticking along and hopefully it will come good. And, and at this current period, the results, which is the, the most important thing, the results are, are going not in the forest away, which is shooting them up the table, which just gives you that bit of breathing space and and it's massive as a as a as a footballer as a squad as a as a club when you can have that little bit of breathing space it just allows you to be excited for the next fixture and not thinking oh we we need to win if we lose we're going to be in in this situation I just wanted to talk about a few of the individuals kind of lead us into the goals anyway I've picked out four we'll just go go through start with um Gibbs White, Mikey, again, the architect. It feels like the whole attack's built around him and he, he's in the, I imagine he's in the form of his career. I mean, the, the, we spoke a lot about the price tag, but it feels value for money now, doesn't it? Certainly does. If you think about the roles he's playing as well, you know, I, I, I think as we evolve our team and hopefully stay up this year, I think you might see him move back into that central midfield three, perhaps, if we get a focal point, that, you know, in front of him. But I think... The role he's playing at the moment is absolutely crucial. So Saturday saw him, he played everywhere, didn't he? He dropped off into that midfield three. He was the focal point at times. He moved to the left-hand side. I saw him on the right-hand side. They're so fluid, that front three. I guess it allows for for them to, to, to sort of try and influence the game. And, and Gibbs White is no exception to that. I think 40 million is a lot of money. Of course it is. You know, we, we've been in the Championship and League One in recent seasons. We, we could only dream about spending about the money as that but I think he's what is he 22 young English like can play in numerous positions can only get better I I didn't realize how quick he was you know so you know I've seen him for Wolves and obviously for Sheffield United as well and I think he had a, a loan at Swansea I always saw him saw him as sort of a ball ball playing quite a culture midfielder he's really rapid like he's a lot quicker when, when you see him it, it, you know when you're at the ground than, than I actually thought. He's um he's a wonderful player and a, a lot of our our play and our work seems to go through him as as it would the way we're lined up at the moment. Um I think his partnership with Brennan and, and Cooper referred to it uh, in in his post match interview. Uh, what words did he use? Exciting, dangerous, something like that. I echo all of them. I think the more those guys play together, uh the more you'll see opposition sort of taking a little bit of a step back because you saw on Saturday they got in behind them two or three times. And Gibbs White's passing for Brennan. Brennan's runs is absolutely, you know, it's phenomenal. It's it's brilliant. And he's so, so integral. So if you cash your mind back a couple of weeks ago when we all believed he'd be out for a month, the buzz around the pub I was in when that team sheet got named and he was in that starting lineup 
it was almost like we just went one goal up. And, and that's how important and integral I think he is to this team. And he's obviously a well-liked individual. You can see that in the celebrations. Great signing. Cooper's man, let's be honest. And I, I think the team's going to be pretty much built around him in, in the coming months. No doubt about that. He's fantastic. What was your take on the two assists, Lewis? And did Leicester make a mistake? By, I mean, they were really high up the pitch. That, that plays into Forest hand with, with Brennan's pace, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, I think I think Leicester we just got really poor to be honest. I think there was there was uh, they're just in a really bad a bad uh, spot at the minute. But at the end of the day, the opportunity is there. You still have to make the pass. You still have to make the run. Uh, and I think that if you if you look at if you look at Gibbs White now, I think this was the whole scenario that probably Cooper wanted. They didn't go out and, and spend this money to not build a team around him. And that's, you know, that they have a, a past relationship, which is always going to help. You know that he trusts the manager and the manager trusts him. And as a player, that's that's massive. Uh, he knows that he's got the managers back in. I think in terms of what Mike was saying about his position, I think that if you look, I don't personally, I don't think he can at this point in time complain a midfield free. I think he's too much of a free spirit. I think that he'd vacate that area a bit too much and leave the likes of Yates uh, a bit, bit kind of isolated. But it, the way the formation is going, if you look at the the back end of of his time at Sheffield United, especially the the even the playoffs, they had a lot of injuries. But he played up front. He played kind of similar uh, position. And I think that at this point in time in his career, I think that suits him more. I think he has he's got that license to go and be that free spirit to go and create and he hasn't really got to keep thinking right I need to get back in a position because in the premiership stuff like that's where you get punished and I think that at this point in time it's it, it's working well and I think if you look at the team and the what I got from from Saturday if you look at it across it, it kind of it's starting to shape up more like the team of last season and the formation of last season if you look at last season if you you think that Zinconago played in the hole with, with Davis. Brennan was really, really out wide and he didn't really play with anyone from the left-hand side. And if you look at it on Saturday, it's that same kind of positioning. I know Gibbs White is not the same focal point as Keenan Davis was, but it's still kind of getting that shape and now. And I think they've landed on it. I think they've tr they trust it as players. I think it's getting them results. And... If you look most weeks, there's there's not really a change in formation or personnel, which which says everything. I think at the start of the year, I wrote a piece with predictions for 2023. And I said, Gibbs White, if Forrest stay up and the team continues to be built around him, could play for England by the end of the calendar year, which is obviously a big task when you've got Foden, Grealish, Madison, Mason Mount, etc. There's so many good players. Do you think it's, that's possible, Lewis, when you see the quality of that pass for the second goal? Could he play for England in time? Yeah, but I think he's just got to enjoy his football. He's got to concentrate on uh, churning performances out for Nottingham Forest week in, week out. There's still so much time. And I think that's that's sometimes where I think we as kind of the outside go wrong. It's like we see five, ten good performance and it's like right now it's England. Mm. That shouldn't really be... Listen, that will come. If he keeps playing like how he's playing... And he's and he's learning. He's learning the other side of the game. He's learning a little uh, tactical stuff like that. Over time, that will come. Like you said, he's still he's still really young. But I think at this this time, I think he's just got to concentrate on playing for Nottingham Forest. Concentrate winning games for Nottingham Forest, and people will come watching. Uh, and it, it it won't be quiet for for much longer. One player who already plays international football, Mikey's Brennan. I mean, we've spoken so much about him and, you know, the evolution of him in a short space of time this season as a, as a Premier League player. And we saw that next big step in this game that, that he, he tucks away that first one, even though he thought it was offside. But the second goal in particular, a couple of times this season, his touch, his first touch hasn't been good. It's taken him wide. This time it's perfect. And then we saw that quality of finish that we saw so many times last season, didn't we? Mm, yeah, we did. <clears throat> I think um, the first goal... I was convinced he was onside because I was level with it. So when he played him through, there was a bit of a um and ah, is he on, is he off? I, I turned around and said to everybody, he's definitely on. And then when I saw the replay, I was thinking, oh, maybe, 
maybe it's a bit closer than I thought, but he, but he was on side. But a couple of weeks ago when I was on, I was a, a tad critical of the chances I think he had against uh, Chelsea. Was it Matt? I think. Yeah. When he, um, but this is what I'm. This is what I'm talking about. So you know, Brennan is only going to get better. He's a brilliant footballer. So it, it did not surprise me whatsoever that he gets a couple of chances this game. His touch is on point and he absolutely buries them. That second goal, that finish was sublime. I think he hit it just with the, with the inside of his foot, bent it around the keeper because, again, I was kind of a little bit level with it. Brilliant finish. You know, that guy, the sky's the limit for him. Honestly, if he's not playing at one of the, the real high echelon clubs, you know, in, in the next few seasons, hopefully he's not, he's still at Voris, but... It would not surprise me whatsoever because I think he can do whatever he wants to do in the game. I think he's that good. Um, and it was just, I was so pleased for him that, you know, it, Temps is always on here. He always talks about production, doesn't he? He always talks about assists and goals. And as much as Brennan influence, influences the game in those little pockets, it was brilliant to see that production come to fruition on Saturday. And, you know, I was, I, I was delighted for him more than anybody. Yeah, I think that's five goals for the season now. What was your take on, from a player's point of view, Lewis, especially, as someone who kind of had that technique yourself, the second goal, the quality of the finish, what was your take on that? No, it was a great finish. It was a great finish. And even the first one, he's still, he's still got a lot to do. He's still got to keep his composure. Uh, and the, I, I, and I've said it before, I, I think that he's got so much potential, but I think he's a player who plays in moments. And I think that he has moments. And if you look at across the board, if you look at the games, even last year, he's not in the Forest career. You 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 wouldn't really, where you look at Gibbs White, who's constantly trying to get the ball, constantly trying to make stuff happen. That's not Brennan Johnson. Brennan Johnson really is on the peripheral of games and he has moments. Now, last year, he when he had their moments, he was, he was clinical. At the start of this year, when he when he has them chances and he doesn't put them away, then that's when the criticism comes because it's it's like, right, well, on a whole, is he really in, is he really affecting the game? And that will always, at this point in time, I think that will always be 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 the case. But in terms of his when he gets into them positions, fair play, the second finish, calm. And and that's what you have to be. And he and he's got that composure. He's got that experience already, scoring a lot of goals in big moments. And uh, no, he like I say, he took it away very nicely. Do you think, as a twenty-one-year-old, I guess you you know you would have been there yourself. You have peaks and troughs early in your career, don't you? Was it inevitable that he might struggle early doors in the Premier League because it's such a big step up? Well, I think it's this. I think it's a big thing. I I I. Uh, I, I had a conversation not so long ago with with a friend of mine, and we were talking about the time that at times when I was when I was playing, and when I was I can remember I was like twenty twenty one, and sometimes if I did not play well, it was like doom and gloom. But it's like the same thing of like he's twenty one years old, and it's like if he he's got at times, especially the attacking point, he's got that football club on his back, and if he doesn't play well, if he doesn't. Uh, contribute in that game, it's then that negative thing. But you have to realise he's still 21 years old and he's got the a fantastic football club, but also a big club, football club, local as well, which is that's what always happens. So he's got pressure. And sometimes that is, he, he's going to he, he's going to be up and down and he's going to learn how to deal with that because he's learning how to deal with that on the job. Uh, and that's, and that's part of the process. But I think that, his criticism early on, I think it's been harsh and I think that people have to understand that he's still new to even playing for Nottingham Forest, really. And it's been a whirlwind over these last kind of 18 months, uh, two years. And I think they've just got to remember that he's still only 21 years old and he, he's still got to a lot of learning to do. But that's with everyone on his side, that's going to help him come on a lot quicker. Do you think his dad having played would have helped him in this situation? Because his dad had, you know, troughs in his career with so many injuries. It must have been a benefit, I guess. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, his, dad, his dad will help in these certain situations where he might feel a certain way. His dad would have had that experience and maybe tell him to deal with it this way or or look from it. 
from a point of view. But at the end of the day, even though his dad is ex 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 uh, ex player, he's still his dad, and first and foremost, that's his son. Do you know what I mean? So he's gonna look at it from from a parent point of view first and foremost. Uh, but I think that that will always help having that experience and that kind of guide guiding right as close to you as as your dad. Um, the other ones I want to pick out, Mikey, the fullbacks. I think I put a tweet out saying to me they're playing as good as any pairing in the country. You know, Trippier and Burn, uh, Zinchenko and Ben White. And, you know, on the last since the Spurs game, the Carabao Cup, the last eight or nine games have been right up there. I mean, Lodi in particular for me, his form is exceptional. Like his first touch is just amazing at the moment. Mm, yeah, totally great. I was talking to my brother about this um, after the game, actually, and um, we were we were sort of harping back to uh, Lodi's first couple of appearances. I think it was Man City, then maybe the Bournemouth game, can't remember which order, and um, it did frighten me a little bit. I, you know, it wasn't getting close to, to men. I think that the, the, to his man, the, the, whole, the p whole pace of the game, I think, was maybe a shock to him. It sounds awful because he comes from Atletico Madrid and he's played for Brazil. So, you know, I'm not saying Nottingham Forest is, but it's a to I guess it's a totally different game, just the speed of it more than anything. But I think what you've seen in the last few weeks in particular is him raise his game to, I think, what he's, what he's capable of. He was magnificent on Saturday and the game before that. His first touch, as you said, Matt, and his delivery into the box is has improved immeasurably and you know that's he's settled into the team he knows where people are now he seems to have just found his his whole um sort of rhythm in terms of how he's how he's going on and going back to Aurier as well he must be one of the best free signings we've ever had as a club and I was, I was trying to cast my mind back about some of the others and I've come up with there was probably laugh at me I've come up with um players like Jeff Thomas and Deli Adebola and Ben Watson, plays like that. I'm, I'm really struggling to try and think of somebody who's come in on a free transfer and had that sort of impact uh, on our... I don't know whether you guys can, but I've been racking my brains all morning and that's all I can come up with. What was Deli Adebola like? Oh, fantastic. Honestly, he's one of the best human beings that I've ever come across. He was... He was... <laughs> He was brilliant. He was just what the change room needed at the time. And and off the pitch, he was fantastic. But he contributed a lot. He contributed more than I think people actually uh, was aware at the time. But as a teammate, as a as a kind of a player in the change rooms, he was he was fantastic for the lads. Just be honest, Lewis. I mean, I was as sceptical as anyone of the Aurier signing. It was felt like it was number 21 or 22. It felt like a bridge too far. Have you been surprised by how good he's been? I think he's just had to find, it, uh, find his feet. You, you have to understand he's playing in the Premiership for a number of years. You don't play in the Premier League if you're, if, you're, if you're not good enough and if you haven't got the ability to do it. Things happen in football clubs and I think that's the... Sometimes we can't just write people off and okay, they might have been an episode or they might have been a situation at Tottenham, but that's Tottenham. That's a different football club in a, in a different environment. They maybe decided to go in a different way, which left him in a in a situation, but that shouldn't tarnish his ability or what he can produce on the football pitch. But I think in terms of, especially the, the, the defence, if you look now, it's just solid. And it's just like they've it, it's come across a back four that has been comfortable, stays the same, and they're getting used to each other. They're now keeping clean sheets, which is massive, which helps. And I think if you look at if you look at Lodi, every everybody says about Atletico Madrid and Brazil, but the two things the things about them two football clubs is that uh, when they play, they normally have most of the possession. They're normally on top. It's very. It's not just that he's had to get used to a different country. Uh, to get used to a new surrounding, but it's also coming into a football team that is under the pressure a lot more than he's used to. And I know to some people that might seem uh, seem a bit silly, but it's he's used to uh, the times that he'll probably defend, probably in a game for Atletico Madrid, is probably three or four times 1v1. Playing for Nottingham Forest, on, he's probably defending 1v1 10, 12 times. It's a completely different outlook of, of the way you're playing football. So I think that 
they've just got used to uh they've created uh a, a unit They've got used to the, the game, the speed, and they've also probably settled off the pitch now by now, which which helps, and, and they're probably a bit more comfortable. Uh, and that, early on, most players will live in a hotel until they can find a, uh, accommodation, which is that it's all uh, you're, you're off the pitch is all up and you're living out a hotel room, you're living out a bag, you, you can't eat properly you can't function properly and stuff like that even though that they, they might seem little things it, it makes a massive difference so hopefully now as well as the team as well as their personal life is just kind of quietened down and now they now they're settled and they can concentrate on the main thing which is which is playing football i guess having scarpa around helps as well and danilo to come up kind of familiarity i mean mikey i think forest have got the option to buy him uh, I, I hope they take it up. There's always the worry, though, that a mega club comes in, Chelsea will buy anyone. And, you know, if a top club wants to play and a player wants to go, these deals happen. Uh, you know, maybe they slip for us 10 million quid to go away. I don't know. But is that, a, 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 I'm a getting ahead of myself there, being concerned, you know, he's getting too good for Forrest for next season. I don't think that's a bad thing. Do, do you know what? If, 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 the, if the huge clubs of, uh, this league and around Europe and even the world are interested in our players and that's a good thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm all right with that. So if he's ripping up trees, it means Forrest are doing well, which means we're staving off relegation, which means we've got a chance to buy him. And if he wants to take another opportunity, with, you know, maybe one of the top them off. I say that because he just spent Tottenham or whoever. That's fine. I'm all right. We'll, we'll just get the next person. I think I think the deal to buy him is, is around... 30 million, I may have just quoted that from somewhere else. But that feels like if he continues his form and if we are safe and if he likes living in Nottingham, as Lewis said, and if he's settled and if he's settled with his family and his friends and he's got his two Brazilian counterparts over here, it may be something that suits all parties. And in which case, that's great. If it doesn't happen and he moves on, you say thanks for it very much, Renan. You, you were fantastic. You, you played an integral part in, in keeping us up and having a wonderful season. You know, we've just got to the semi-final of the Carabao Cup as well having an amazing season so he he's a key part of it if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't we'll just try and find the next one it's a big it's a big world out there Matt there are some very very good footballers around and if it, if it doesn't work with Renan that's that's absolutely fine but um it I, I think it just shows you as well that there were a few left backs we were linked with over the summer I think one of them's just signed for Villa and yeah, had a very Marino, yeah. interesting debut. So there are some really good players out there, really good fullbacks. Hopefully, Renan will stay on because he's he's making a huge difference to Forrest at the moment. And and what you were saying, Matt, both fullbacks have been integral to what we've been doing in the last few months, and long may it continue. Just having a look, it sounds like, it looks like there's an option to buy him for thirty million euros, but we don't don't know for sure. But um, oh, I didn't anyway. just make. 30 up then. I had 30 in my No, no, that was there. That was there for real. Um, Lewis mentioned about the back four being settled and obviously that's very true, but they had to bring in Scott McKenna, Mikey, and that was a test of him, wasn't it? He'd had a rough time in his last Premier League game. Maybe not for Arsenal? I don't know. He'd been out for quite a while. He had a rough time against Blackpool like everyone did. Uh, and he came in and reminded us why he was player of the season mostly, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I, I thought he did really well. I think he's... Um obviously played alongside Joe Worrell numerous times. So I think that helped. He wasn't coming into a, a back four where he didn't, didn't know the personnel or a system that he was unfamiliar with. But he's pretty solid. He he struggled against Blackpool, but everybody did. And like you said, you, you know, he's not really had the run of games. But um, I think as the game wore on, he became more and more comfortable. And what he's, what he's brilliant at, him and Joe, and I will give a, a shout out to Joe Mike, my wife loves him probably a bit too much, but in terms of what he does on the football pitch and what they did on Saturday, that's what you want. Numerous crosses came in. They were first to the ball, heading, kicking. I'm a bit old school, you know, centre off, just get rid of the ball. Or this ball playing. No, I'm, not, I'm not having that. But Scott McKenna is very, um, very adept at doing that. And do you know what? If Willie Bolly's out for a few more weeks, I have no qualms whatsoever with, with Scott being in that team. I think a run might do him doing the world of good. But he, he was great. I was also thinking around how much would I rate the players on Saturday for their performance. And, you know, we've been on here before, Matt, where we've said, usually on the games where we struggled, you know, nobody got above a six or maybe a 6.5. I'm struggling to think of a player that was on that pitch, even the subs, and we can talk about this, that was less than a seven and a half, eight, 
out of them. I thought they all contributed, and, and McKenna was certainly one of them. Yeah, I'll come on to the subs in a minute. Mikey made an interesting point there, Lewis, about head it and kick it centre halves. In the Premier League, does at least one of them are probably both have to be a bit more than that now? If you're going to beat presses, you have to be able to play through them, don't you? Yeah, to an extent. Well, first and foremost, you're there to defend. And mm. I think that over time, it's it's this thing that kind of people are looking at the at the least. It's like the, the last thing we look at is can you defend or the first thing is can you play with a foot? Where at the end of the day, you're there to defend. You're there to keep goals out, you know, and that is the bottom line. Uh, and I'm really, I'm to be, I'm really happy for Joe to be fair because I, mm-hmm. I've, I've, like I said earlier in the season, I've been on and I felt that he was a bit of a scapegoat. I felt that he got a bit of unnecessary criticism and he was a bit of a fall guy because the the squad was and the team was just underperforming and it was like I think at that time as well. The manager was a, was just trying to juggle and trying to find something, and I think at times he's probably an easy option uh, to leave out. But I, so I'm so happy that he's come back in. He's cemented his place. The the form's been an upturn since he's been back in the thing because he is at this point he is not in the forest. He is the future of the football club. So, and and the biggest thing he does he heads it and kicks it, and that's what he will do. So. I'm I'm really pleased for him uh, because he deserves it, and hopefully now, obviously, like you said, with with Bolly out injured, uh, McKenna comes back in, and sometimes, sometimes a little break out of the team can can help you because you kind of look at things a bit differently. He started the season, and it's a bit of a whirlwind still. Premier League, everything's new. Going to these games, and sometimes you need to come out come out a bit and look for it from the outside and. And maybe maybe he's done that and he's kind of just got back to basics. And then I've just got to defend. First and foremost, let me go in there and defend. And the rest will hopefully, with the more confidence and more games he plays, will come back. So I think the little bits now, which I said, I think that the manager's really got is 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 got this team, he's got this eleven that he's confident with. I think there'll be a few changes in with injuries and suspensions that you can't help. And I think at the top end, uh, there will always be a, a few changes, but that that will always happen. I think you have to keep that that top end fresh. But I think the 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 majority of that squad will for the for the foreseeable will be the same. When you said they thought Joe was the easy option to leave out, is that because he's a good pro who will take it the right way and bounce back? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I just think that sometimes he's he's such a good lad. He's a good pro. Uh, everyone knows his affiliation with a football club. Sometimes it and it, and it could be totally wrong, but sometimes as a, as a manager, you just know that you're not going to get a bad reaction from him. And at times when you need to make a decision or you need to uh, you need to have a look at different things, sometimes you just don't need that other headache of a, of, of another problem. Uh, and I think that it was that. Everyone, everyone knows that kind of Joe in terms of how he plays and uh, in terms of his his running power is not his biggest strength. Everyone knows that it's not it's not it's not a kind of a surprise. He knows that that's why he plays the way he plays. But I think everyone kind of jumped on that bandwagon of like, right, it's the Premier League. All these strikers are really quick. I'm not sure he's mobile enough. And I think it was just kind of a big, a big topic where it just became something bigger than what it what it was. And if you look now, he's back in the team and he's not getting done. He's not getting he's not getting found out. And I think the and in the end, I think that's what's happened. And I think he's come back in and he's ready to come back in and, and take and, and take it on for the rest of the season. Uh, you mentioned the subs there, Mikey, earlier. Um, Colback again, really good. Uh, I want to talk about Sam Surridge, the kind of the assisting this, the assisting the assister for both goals. Again, a difficult period for him. He had a nightmare against Blackpool, missing those chances. He missed the penalty against Wolves, and as a looks like a confidence player, you worry he might go under. But you have got to give him a lot of credit for his his all round performance against Leicester. I thought was was top notch, wasn't it? It was uh, assisting the assister. Is that a uh... Are you looking for points on your fancy? I'm looking team? for fancy Premier League points. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I know what you mean. He, he he was really good when he came on. He um, 
I, I'll tell you what I shouted at him in a minute. And it's good. So, but he was great in terms of his his his, uh, his work rate. His his you know obviously contributions to the goals were were there for all to see. There was one bit near the end of the game. We'd gone two 0 up. They pushed up ten yards, and we whacked a couple. We whacked a couple of balls. Old school. We whacked a couple of balls to the centre forward, and he won the header against a defender that was about a foot taller than him, and won it again. And then we did it again, and he won it again, and he held up, and he won a free kick. And I, I stood up and applauded because, yes, we can talk about, you know, uh, assisting the assister. We can talk about that, of course, uh, you know, and his impact on goals and his overall, you know, strong run in and his, um, you know, occupying the defenders. But but something like that is, 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 just, is, for me, like, just important. So what we don't want to do is letting a goal then just, you know, allow the defence to push up some of the ugly stuff that maybe, maybe he's not, hasn't been great at in the past. He was doing everything when he came on, Matt. Honestly, he was doing everything. He was getting involved. He was doing the ugly stuff. And I think I think that's great because, it, you know, like the rest of the team, you know, I think he, he struggled against Blackpool, those those guys that started. But Cooper's kept faith with him and he brought him on. And I just think he made a huge impact. In fact, they all did. You know, Colback was fantastic again. And he, he looks a bit trimmer to me. He looks like he might have lost a bit of weight. He looked a bit quicker than maybe he was at the start of the season. Um, so he, he made a good impact. I thought Nico Williams was only on five or ten minutes, but he was running up and down that wing. Um, you know, he, he did really well. Who else did we bring on, Matt? Can you remember? Uh, O'Brien I was going to give a shout out for. Of did a good job. Yeah, he, he was great. He was a um, little pocket rocket, wasn't he, in, that, in the sense he was ferreting around up and down. Um, they all made a great contribution, and that's, that's what we're going to need. And can I also shout out as well... Um, Kiate and Lingard for both the Leicester game and the Wolves game were on the bench, geeing up the team, celebrating with them afterwards. Sometimes when players are injured, and Lewis, you, you'll obviously know, you know a lot more than me. Um, you don't necessarily the fan doesn't necessarily see them around, but those two have been integral, like more than integral. You know they're, they're pumped up like the rest of us, and and that's good to see. I think that says a lot about what Cooper's trying to build in terms of team spirit as well. I don't know whether you guys agree, but that, that meant a lot to me watching that. You know, the players that aren't able to contribute on the pitch are contributing in other ways. Mm. What's your take on that, Lewis? Do you want injured players around or not? <laughs> uh, some managers are very funny about that. Some managers don't want, if you're not in a squad, if you're injured, they don't want you around the around the stadium, they don't want you around the players on the match day. Mm. They kind of want that cornered off area, match day, that's it. As of kind of one o'clock, Change room doors are shut, and it's just that that match day squad. Uh, I, I think I think now it's just. I think sometimes you look at, as you said, that the two players there, but only because they was kind of more in more in kind of around the team. But there's probably other players there, but they keep under the radar. They may be going watch from the other side in in the box. It's all little. Everyone has their kind of own tape because it's it's hard. Everyone wants to play football. Last thing you want to do is on the sideline, so everyone kind of deals with it differently. But listen, I think it, I think it shows, I think it shows that the that the team's together. I think it shows that the squad's together. I think it shows that it's a it's a good period uh, within within the football club at this point in time, and and hopefully that can that can continue. I'll come back to the Surridge question shortly. I want to ask Lewis, but um, obviously the win came at a price, as it always seems to with Forest at the moment. A one knee's injured, Lingard's injured, Kriate, Mikey, you mentioned, is injured, uh, along with the long term ones like Nia Kate and Richards. And now Yates goes off with the manager saying he took a blow to the face. So I guess he's in concussion protocol for at least a week. Dean Henderson uh, looked like he did himself a serious injury taking a goal kick. And I thought he should have gone off. I didn't see the sense in him staying on. So we wait to see how long he's out for. I mean, there comes a point, Lewis, I guess, do you get a bit concerned that you go one injury too far? Uh, it's it's January in in a in a football season. It, it, it's going to happen. People are going to pull up. People are going to become fatigued. That's the whole point of having a of having a big squad. I I think that the the when you when you look at when you look at Yates, hopefully it's just more of a protocol than actually uh, anything serious. Because I think that he's obviously been been vital. Uh, with his change of form as well, and it's, it's time for the players on on the fringes to to come and to come and stake a claim. Now it's it's an opportunity. That's that's the way they've got to see it. We signed all these players in the summer. A lot of them 
haven't played and, and they want to play. So, yes, it's unfortunate for some of the players to, to start missing out, but it's, it's a chance for other people to come in and show what they're about. Ah, Swan makes a point in the... Uh, I haven't thought about this, uh, that we'd already made three... Uh, substitution sets already and couldn't take him off so that's a good point and I, yeah you might be right there Nick um Mikey what's your take on it because obviously Cooper's mantra is next man up and we see O'Brien we see Colback and McKenna doing it uh it's transfer window Danilo's coming in we hope a couple more coming in are you a bit worried about the horizon still or are you pretty chilled about it uh I'm, I'm okay about it I think it's nice to hear you know, Lewis obviously played the game has seen this season after season, so it's nice to kind of get that view of, of somebody that's that's a lot closer to it than me. I think from from a fan's perspective, you, you want the guys that aren't starting games to be pushing. And I guess if you would have asked me this question after Blackpool, I might have given you a different answer and said, you know, those guys had a bit of an opportunity, didn't perform, maybe we do need to look at something. But then... I can't contradict myself because I've just said that the guys that came on the pitch did make a big a big impact and a big influence. And that's what you want. So it's that ne- next man up mentality, next cab off the rank, whatever cliche you want to come up with. Um, I guess my only worry is we're only allowed to reg- register, is it 25? Um, yeah. So, you know, for example, I know I spoke to you about this in our WhatsApp group, Matt. If we did, for example, call Horvath, back let's just say Henderson's injured for two months that takes another space and will we need that space potentially to reinforce an area of the pitch that's that's potentially lacking or do we just go with Hennessy for however long it's going to be so there's that balancing act but I think it won't just be as that's, that's, that's in in trouble injury wise you know if you look at some of the, the squads I think Southampton got a lot out injured I think Villa do as well there's quite a few that have you know some some serious some serious injuries I think it's just balancing that up. So if we know that three or four of them are going to be back in three or four weeks' time, do we then say, right, we'll just wait, we'll just wait that out, we'll get through January, we'll bring one or two in, but essentially by mid-Feb, we're going to have a pretty fully fit squad and this is what we're going to go with. If on the other hand, and I don't know the answer to this, if Henderson's maybe a bit longer term, if Albany is not due back for another month or two, do they then say actually there's going to be six, seven, eight, nine games in that period. We can't afford to to drop points because we're just on the cusp at the moment. Um, it's not as if we're kind of comfortable, higher table, and drop a few, it's okay because we're... And it's just making that call. But I think at the moment, I'm, I'm really enthused by what I saw Saturday. You can only go off what the lads are performing. And I think it's just a case of wait and see with those guys that went off injured. But we're now in tran- January transfer window and it's Forest. So we, we know what happens. Um, I just want us to have a bit of a measured approach. So if we get three or four in, fine. I don't want us to, to do nothing and then on deadline day get six in or something, which we've done in the past, which is nuts. So I'd like to think that the guys behind the scenes know how long these guys are going to be out injured and say, right, this is what we need to do. And whether it's bring some people in, fine. If not, we'll do what Lewis says and just next man up and then get those guys back. So I think I'm all right at the moment, but that's probably because I'm not aware of the severity of some of the injuries. Yeah, personally, I think they just walk right up to the line and we just have to hope that... I mean, I'd back Hennessy if Henderson's out for a few months, but you don't want to lose another midfielder and you don't want to lose another striker. We're right at that point now where it would you'd be in bother if you lost anyone else. I mean, Danilo, people in the comments are asking, um, he's young enough that he wouldn't be in the 25-man squad, as are Brennan and Nico and Mbe So, I think. So, there's yeah... There's ways around it. You can sign young players, but you don't want too many young players as well. Um, let's look at Bournemouth for the last uh, five minutes or so. It was a Scarpa was an interesting one on Saturday. I thought he was really good for the first half, and I think the pace of the game catches up to him. And then we see Surridge come on and do really well. Surridge is an ex Bournemouth player. Is there an argument, Lewis, that you go with the focal point striker from the start at Bournemouth, or do you stick with the eleven that's just won the last game? Uh. I think he. I think the manager will just assess it uh, from the game throughout the week and and have a look really. Uh, why change things at the minute? Maybe maybe it might change personnel in terms of in that position, but I don't know if he's going to kind of want to change the formation. Then it takes an opportunity to go and cement again three points. I think that that's the biggest thing. It's important now. It's like yep, yeah, on a really good run everything's upbeat but let's not 
get carried away and start, right, maybe resting a few or maybe looking at this, just go and keep the foot on the pedal now and try and really bridge that, get that gap and create that gap from, from you and the bottom teams. And I think that's the the way that they'll be looking at it. It's a, it's a fantastic opportunity to go and get three points. What do you think, Mikey? I think I'd stick with Scarpa and run him till he's like 50 minutes and he's tiring and bring Sam on still. But there's there's a, there's a case made the other way. Where are you at on it? Yeah, I think I think I'm more more with you. I think my thought process might be slightly different. So, um, Bournemouth is struggling. We're not at the moment in terms of form. I think realistically, if Henderson and Yates uh, are going to be missing on Wednesday, if you take Scarpa out too. That's the centre of your team. That's three of your four centre. That's the spine of your team. So I'd be reluctant to to change that too because it sounds as if we're probably already going to be enforced to make two changes at least. So I, I'd keep Scarpa in there. Um, I think when I saw him against Wolves in the cup, he had a very similar performance, Matt, where he, he looked really sharp, really bright, buzzing around for sort of half hour, 45 minutes, and then sort of faded. And I think we've got the perfect sub to come on. You know, if, if Surridge performs the way he did against Leicester, you know, it's his old team. He missed a couple of chances there last season, didn't he? If you remember, I think he had the one disallowed and then, and then missed one. Um, he'll be keen to impress. But yeah, I think I'd, I'd keep it the same. It sounds like we're probably going to have two enforced changes anyway, but I will be looking at Surridge's first change. Absolutely. What about in midfield? Colback or O'Brien to come in? A uh, callback for me. I think he's he, he's done enough. And like I said, he looks in, it looks in real real good shape as well so um it might be a bit bitty that game you know what Bournemouth are like Kiefer Moore's bound to score against as he always does so just a bit of experience in in that um centre of the park and and Lewis O'Brien again came on had a wonderful little cameo for 20 minutes so I think I'd be looking to to maybe freshen that area of the pitch up in the sort of second part of the second half but again there's options there um I think if we're at home I might be tempted to have played O'Brien with his more powerful running, but I think we're probably going to be on the back foot a little bit in that game, certainly in the first half, and Colback's your ideal man for that. Yeah, I go with Colback. I never thought he looked out of shape or, or, or a bit carrying a few. I he, just he's looks, all... he just looks really, really trim, really fit. Like he was yeah. he, he was up and down, he looks strong. I think he's just maybe been doing a bit of cardio. I just certainly noticed, I've not seen him for a few weeks and months and when he came on I thought yeah he's, he's, he's looking pretty strong so might just be me <laughs> so. um, Lewis you mentioned the opportunity that it is for Forest I mean Bournemouth are one of those sides in in free fall like I mean Everton and a couple of others that are really bombing at the moment do you go there and do you, is it do you, do you take a point there or do you go there thinking nothing less than all three points is acceptable I don't think you have that mindset of like, right, we need to put that pressure on like now we need to get three points. But I think within within the camp, you're going there to win the game. Like like Mike said, we we're in a good moment. They're not. That we you we have no pressure. And I know it's away from home again. So we have no pressure. But I I kind of also don't think we should kind of hopefully don't go in with that mindset of like, well, let's sit back and if we take a point, I think we just go and play our normal game and try. I, I think sometimes when you can, well, listen, we've had a, a few good results, which has put us in a good position. So we want to try and win it, but let's not lose. I think sometimes when you get into that that kind of attitude, sometimes it can cost you and you end up doing either. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's just having the same mindset uh, and, the, and the same look. I think we're in a, we're in a really good moment. And 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 let's and let's use it to our advantage. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think kind of the mentalities and the tactics are to win and get at them. But if Forest take a point, I don't think it's the end of the world. It just keeps them at arm's length. It's another point in the bank on the road. What, what would you say, Mikey? Mm, yeah, it's momentum for me. Um, so I don't think a point's a bad result at all because if you know we, we our home form is really really strong. We've got leads at home to come. You fancy us to get something there. Um, and, and again, you know, when you when you draw a game, you stop the opposition from winning. So there's that to consider. So it's not all just about building your points as well. It's the impact that you have on the other teams. Now, I'm obviously preaching the obvious, but um, again, I, I don't think a point's a bad, a bad result. But I do concur with what Lewis was saying as well. I think we're in a good space at the moment. You know, there's a lot of positivity around the club. We're playing some good stuff. We're being clinical. We're keeping clean sheets. 
So there's no reason why we can't go there and try and impose ourselves on the game and, and look to get all three points. But just think you have to tailor it with a bit of expectation. We're not going to go, we're not going to win five, six in a row. Blimey, I hope we do. But realistically, we're probably not. So picking up the odd point away from home against the teams that are in and around you, I'm never going to grumble with that. Not at all. Uh, I see the clock's ticking. I didn't know it's been quite so long. I just wanted to rattle through a few quick other points. Um, what's your take on the Danilo deal, Lewis? A young player from Brazil, a lot of talent. <coughs> Excuse me. Is it it's a big ass still of a young player to come over to the Premier League and hit the ground running? Uh, yeah, there's obviously some kind of connection uh, with this kind of Brazilian market. There's obviously with maybe the new uh, kind of upstairs and the stuff like that maybe that's their their route and that's the market that they see at this time is is uh more beneficial uh but i think it's big money but what transfer in the premier league these days isn't big money so i think i think you have to pay a premium for for, for anybody but and like i said it's still not still not completely done but if he comes in and i think that's that's the that's the thing where over the last over the next a uh, few weeks now. I'd be looking maybe to try and trim, trim, trim. The, there's a few that maybe, maybe might have to leave. Maybe he's not going to get the game time that they want. And I think that's the, that's the best thing now. Why you're in this moment? Why you're in this good moment now? Try and get this squad uh, to at the end of the window to be to be exactly where you want it. Uh, last few points. I mean, we'll leave it there basically. And thanks for everyone who's watched along. Mikey, any other business as usual? Any final points you want to raise? I do have one thing, and it's about this this uh, this forty point staying up uh, myth, as me and my brother call it. I'm just going to give you a quick fact for everybody to uh, to sort of digest. So, I think people just say forty points because it's a nice round number, and they think if we hit that, we're pretty much staying up. And I think maybe. 15, 20 years ago, that might have been the case. But I, I was looking at some stats this morning. Um, what you do when you're on a speed awareness course and you're not paying attention. Um, so I was looking at some football <laughs> stats. You're supposed stats to say that with 500 <laughs> people plus watching, but okay. <laughs> um, so I was looking at some football stats this morning. So um, in the last 14 years, let me just give you some of these numbers. 40 points has kept you up twice. 39 twice. 38 and 37 once. And then 36 and 35, seven times. Hmm. So over 50% of the time in the last 13, 14 years, you only need 36 points to stay up. And we're on 20 in 19 games. So people can do the maths. So I think four more wins, five more wins, maybe a couple of draws. I think we're fine. But I don't, I don't want people to say, because they, they always say around 50 points for the championship, you don't go down to. But... I'm not sure any of that's true anymore. So it's interesting just to look at some of these stats and say, actually, are we as far off where we need to be? And it's all about accumulating them points. That's where my head's at anyway. Mm. Is it still 17th or, yeah, Lewis, is 17th still the, the be-all and end-all? Or do you kind of internally, as a dressing room, are they recalibrating their aims now? Or are they still thinking just stay up at all costs? No, I don't think you can get carried away. Listen, we're in a, it's a good moment, but I don't think you get carried away if start of the season. Everyone connects with a football club. You can stay up on the last day of the season. Yeah, you snap their hands, and that's that's for that is should always be the main aim. If you can if you can improve on that, fantastic. It's a bonus for everybody. But I don't think the well, I know for a fact that the that the change room and and, and the staff won't be getting carried away with themselves and and, and trying to look at say the top ten right now. Uh, I think, like I said, over the next next six weeks to, to eight weeks try and create that gap as big as possible and that's always the aim now you've created that little bit now with the with the with the results that you've got so over this next period now just to try and cement on that and just and just keeping keeping that gap excellent excellent uh any of the business Lewis uh, how's loft for dynamo going I think you are you mid table us doing okay yeah, or are you a bit yeah, we've a bit of a, yeah we've had a bit of a uh we've had a lot of lot of injuries our best player we've we've had to we've had to sell our best player he's he's now gone to baseford uh so yeah it's it, it's we've had a bad bad six weeks really it's been it's been the total opposite to kind of like <laughs> forest. but it's it is what it is hopefully we can we can come back with it at, at that level when you're when your squad's depleted or 
or you're missing missing certain players that, that they make the difference and and at that point in time we've just been on the we just we've been on the wrong side of a bit of luck but I'm sure we'll be able to we'll be able to turn it around and and uh, have a good second half of the season that's for sure yeah I think that's my one caveat of concern with Forrest so touch would have really really crucial player doesn't get injured but at the moment it's all going very well right uh, i think we shall leave it there thanks very much to everyone who's watched along and commented very much appreciated and as a, as ever if you liked it do give us a like do subscribe give us a review tell your mate tell your next door neighbor etc etc mikey thank you very much cheers matt and thanks lewis enjoyed it problem not a problem Enjoy yes thank it. you very much lewis and we shall be back on uh monday after the bournemouth game so have a good week everyone and we shall see you soon